What's going on everyone? In this video, we will introduce the concept of proprietary trading and discuss the proprietary trading operations of financial middlemen. We recently introduced the concept of front running. If you haven't watched that one yet, be sure to check it out. In that video, we told a story about an individual trader at an investment firm that enjoyed trading in front of customers with his personal account for financial gain. And now I want to look more closely at financial firms as a whole. We touched on order flow in the front running video and we found it to be the means by which financial middlemen can engage in front running. In this video, I want to expand on this idea by identifying why a middleman firm would be trading in the first place. This brings us to proprietary trading or prop trading, which it is usually called for short. As we examine this concept, we will look to answer these questions. What is proprietary or prop trading? What problems emerge from proprietary trading operations of firms? How are these problems solved? When we consider the proprietary trading operations of firms, we will use Coinbase and their trading bot as an example for that discussion. And when we talk about how the problems are solved, we're gonna discuss the Volcker rule. So let's get started. So proprietary trading, where to start? So what exactly is proprietary trading or prop trading? All right, I guess that'll do. Proprietary trading is trading for profit that is carried out by a firm with its own capital. This type of trading is also called prop trading. Let's expand for a moment on this for profit part of this definition. Isn't all trading directly for profit? The answer to this question is no. Many firms trade in financial markets for a variety of reasons, all centered around their business operations. Most large corporations, for example, employ traders directly or indirectly for hedging purposes. Financial hedging is trading that is carried out for the purpose of reducing risk. What makes proprietary trading different from other trading activities is that it is done specifically for profit. This type of trading is also called speculation. <laughs> I want to look now at problems that emerge from prop trading at firms. Let's take a look at what Coinbase tells us about their prop trading. If you don't know already, Coinbase is a company that provides cryptocurrency related services and also owns and operates the cryptocurrency exchange called GDAX. This makes Coinbase a financial middleman. We are here on the GDAX trading rules webpage and let's just look at what they tell us under their corporate operations section. Coinbase Inc, which owns and operates GDAX, also trades its own corporate funds on GDAX. Coinbase does not have any special priority and is subject to the same price time priority and fee structure as all other traders. The Coinbase application, which trades on GDAX, only trades based on market data and does not have access to inside information. It does not engage in any front running. So let's just take a look and pull out some of the important parts. The first thing that I want to point you to is the fact that Coinbase Inc. owns and operates GDAX. Like we just said a minute ago, that makes Coinbase a financial middleman. The next thing I want to point you to is the fact that Coinbase trades its own corporate funds on GDAX. This fact allows us to see that Coinbase engages in proprietary trading. So the next thing is that Coinbase says the playing field is level. They don't have any special priority and they're subject to the same price time priority and fee structure as all other traders. When they say price time priority, they're referring to the algorithm the matching engine uses when it matches trades. If you wanna learn more about that process, be sure to check out the matching engine video on the Deep Lizard channel. 
the last thing that I want to point you to, or really two things, exist in the last section that we read. The first thing is that this trading is done by the Coinbase application. So what this is, is a bot that actually trades. Use the word application, that just means a bot. And if you're a developer, you usually just call it code. Some people will say program or code or application or bot, but all those terms mean the same thing. So this means that if you're a trader and you trade on GDAX, you're also trading alongside of the Coinbase bot. But anyway, where were we? So we're on the last part where we just saw that Coinbase trades with an application or a bot. Now the next couple of things they say here is that the bot trades based on market data and it doesn't have access to inside information. Now the other thing that they say is that it does not engage in any front running. Now what I want to point out here is why are they going through the trouble of saying these things? Because they've said it twice. They've said that they don't have special priority inside information available to the bot that trades. And they also say they don't engage in front running. The reason that they're saying this is because of the conflict of interest that arises or emerges whenever there is proprietary trading with inside a financial middleman firm. And this isn't just a case with GDAX or Coinbase. This is the case with most brokers that you can think of. Even though Coinbase tells us that they don't engage in any front running and they don't have any special privileges, they certainly could and we wouldn't necessarily know about that. And this, like I said, is the reason that prop trading produces a conflict of interest. The firm is interested in getting the best prices in the marketplace to make a profit. Customers of the firm are interested in getting the best prices in the marketplace to make a profit. Boom, we have a conflict. This is a conflict because the firm is competing with the customer in the marketplace for the best prices available. The firm has a vested interest in outcompeting the customer while at the same time also having a vested interest in making the customer competitive. Conflicts like these that involve middlemen are managed through goodwill and regulation. We will see more on this when we move this discussion to the Volcker Rule. Other types of conflicts can arise as well, and this just depends on the core operating activities of the business. This is because trading encourages risk, and if not checked, this risk taking can result in blow ups that take down whole firms. This brings us to our next topic, which is regulation. Let's look now at the Volcker Rule. The Volcker Rule is regulation that specifically targets the proprietary trading operations of banking institutions. The rule aims to ban this activity because banks use their own capital, which includes the funds of customers, for the risky business of trading. The Volcker Rule. Under the current draft, the rule prohibits banks from making bets that will put their own capital at risk. On this page here, you will notice how the word speculative is used to describe prop trading and proprietary trading. The Volcker Rule has been put into place, but there was a lot of debate about what actually constituted proprietary trading and how the rule could be enforced by regulators. This is because banks engage in many types of trading activities and financial transactions. So the trouble was that it would be hard to tell or prove what's what. Nevertheless, the rule was enacted and remains active as of now. And as a result, many banks have sold off their prop desks. Prop desk is another word that you'll typically hear, and that just means the proprietary trading operations of the business. And typically, they'll call that a prop desk for short. The main takeaways from this video are all centered around prop trading. Financial middlemen that provide traders with access to financial markets also trade their own accounts. And we have seen that this type of trading is called proprietary trading. The existence of prop trading, as they call it, produces conflicts of interest between customers and firms by presenting firms with the ability to tilt the playing field. When dealing with middleman firms, it's ultimately up to their sense of ethics and up to the regulators to keep the playing field level. 
I hope you like this video and find this content useful. If you do, be sure to check out the other videos like this one on the Deep Lizard channel and subscribe to stay up to date.